Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Orzhov Defenders. What is going on, everybody? And yes, we are back. We have got another very interesting build for you today. This is brought to you by Legend VD, another legendary content creator. Thank you so much, Legend VD, for sharing this over on Aether Hub. This deck caught my eye immediately. <laughs> uh, he named it Dominaria Defenders, uh, and when I saw Defenders, I knew there was sort of a a semi-buildable archetype around that uh, based on drafting the new set and things like that. And so I thought, hey, you know what? Let's let's check out what Legend VD threw together here. Uh, and truthfully, I was a little surprised. I have only played one game with this. I will just go ahead and say uh, it was against a Boros Burn deck and we won. Uh, now, against Boros Burn, I think you would probably expect to do relatively well, given that you can block a lot of the things that they're going to throw at you. Uh, and so, f in that capacity, I don't think it's overly surprising. However, uh, this is, when you look at this deck, it's not necessarily one that you're like, wow, this is really going to take down some wins. I think it's a little bit more silly, a little bit more fun, uh, but Legend VD really did do a good job. So thank you, Legend VD, for throwing this one together. Uh, obviously, the build is around defenders, so we have got a lot of defenders in this deck. Uh, we've got Waking Bulwark, I uh, hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, Concealing Curtains, which is actually just a really good card. We've seen this in a lot of black uh, discard focus decks, uh, a lot of mono black, things like that, where you can flip this, hopefully discard a card from the opponent's hand. Um, they draw a card, of course, but then you are left with a 3-4 Menace, which is just pretty good. Uh, Clockwork Draw Bridge, excuse me, uh, a 0 3 for 1 defender. You can tap a creature with this, uh, which is actually pretty helpful given, you know, there's a lot of things out there that might have an activated ability or something like that, but on top of that, it just shuts down uh, an attacker, uh, which is really nice. So I do like that quite a bit. Uh, we have Blight Pile, uh, which is a way of literally just zapping life as quickly as we can. So this is really going to be one of our more payoffy kind of cards uh, to be able to, to tap three, tap it, and then just drain life from the opponent. Uh, very, very good for that. You'll notice we do have Spirited Companion in here. We'll talk about that in a second. I know it's not a defender. We do also have uh, Gibbering Barricade. So this is gonna be a draw card engine for us. We can pay three, sack a creature, you gain one life. I'll talk about why this is so good in just a minute when we talk about our payoff card. Two of our biggest creatures in the deck. Uh, Shieldwall Sentinel is our first. This is actually gonna pull out another creature with Defender. Now the creature we most likely will want to pull out is probably Wing Mantle Chaplain. Uh, this is really the biggest payoff for the deck. When it enters the battlefield, uh, create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying for each creature with defender you control. But not only that, whenever another creature with defender enters the battlefield under your control, you actually create another bird. So this not only has immediate impact on the board by spreading it out and giving you some of these little 1-1 one, one flyers that you can ping down the opponent with, it also continues that process for every new defender you play after the fact, which is huge for this deck because we do need some way to deal damage and defending is not always gonna get us there. Now the other way we can get some damage in, of course, is Walking Bulwark. This is a way of attacking in with a defender. You can pay two of any color and basically get an attack in with any defender we need. This is a great way of finishing the game as well. Uh, what we'll notice here, or one thing that I wanted to, to point out, we do have a roadside reliquary here. So this is actually pretty important. If you control an artifact, draw a card. If you control an enchantment, draw a card. Now you do have to sacrifice this to do so, but we have plenty of artifacts here uh, that will help trigger this, but we also have that Spirited Companion. That's part of why that's so important to the deck, uh, to be able to trigger that Reliquary as well. We also have Touch the Spirit Realm, which is a really good way of getting uh, some, some big things off the opponent's side of the field. You can also discard and just channel this out uh, to exile an artifact or, an, or, or creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. This works really well uh, with things like the Wing Mantle Chaplain. So this is a great way to just re-trigger this if we need to, which is very, very good. Uh, finally, we do have a couple of other removal pieces. Soul Transfer is, of course, here, and then Infernal Grasp as well. The land base is pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy aside from that roadside reliquary, so I don't need to talk too much about that. But again, Legend VD did a really good job of putting this together, guys. So we're going to give it a shot today, hopefully have some fun, maybe get a win. Uh, but truthfully, I just thought this was a really ridiculously fun looking deck. So we're going to give it a shot, hopefully have some fun. Let's do it. 
All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is a keep. It's not necessarily a great keep, but we do have some card draw. We've got a nice curve out here, uh, at least for the first turn or two. So I think this is worth trying. We'll give it a shot. Uh, I do like that so much of this is just a well-curved out deck. Like you've got a lot of one, two, three, and four drops. So you kind of just have a nice curve all the way through. So generally you'll find a play, even if it's not the best play all the time, uh, but I think that's okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna go Spirited Companion here. Uh, concealing Curtains makes a lot of sense from the standpoint of you would like to hit a land drop on the next turn and then ideally flip it. However, because we're not guaranteed that land drop, I think it's better to actually just run with this and we'll see what happens. Uh, I would like to draw into more land, so I think that Spirited Companion is definitely the right call. All right. Let's see what they're gonna do. I assume they take, truthfully, I don't know. It might be Blight Pile, as silly as that sounds. Um, I'm not really sure. The Concealing Curtains is important from the standpoint of we get to kind of play with their hand a little bit, um, but it's not necessarily great. And it looks like we are gonna get unlucky here for game one, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and Blight Pile here. What's nice is this does get around cut down, uh, which we know they run. Uh, so this is actually just a perfectly reasonable play in general. I think it's fine. They have an Infernal Grasp, but that's not the end of the world. Um, and they have another cut down. Cool. That's fine. Land. Land is good. Excellent. Um, all right, let's Concealing Curtains and let's Blight Pile. Uh, so this is a nice play because if they have, for instance, uh, sweepers that we would be worried about would be like Meat Hook Massacres or something along those lines, they clearly don't have a Meat Hook Massacre uh, that would be able to actually do too much here. So this is actually quite nice. I am going to go ahead and just flip this. Uh, oh, wow. Um, what are we worried about most? I think Shieldred is actually the bigger problem. It might be Invoke, actually. That might have been a mistake. We have the Infernal Grasp to deal with the Shieldred. Uh, that Invoke Despair is definitely scary, um, but we do have outs to, to kind of get around it, so we'll see. Okay, cool. And they are not going to attack. Excellent. Uh, so... Um, what's the best move here? So I think we attack first. We let them double block, uh, and then we Infernal Grasp one of them. Uh, so that way we both, we get basically the board clear out of the way here. Uh, so, I mean, we do take a little bit of damage to do it, but we've got both of their creatures off the board. I'm just gonna go ahead and activate this since we don't have anything else to do. So that pings for a damage. Uh, not amazing, of course, but that's fine. Okay, uh, I'm just going to sacrifice the Blight Pile. We're doing more damage with the Revealing Eye at the moment, so I think that's probably just the better bet. Let's go ahead and Shield Wall Sentinel. Uh, of course, I will take that action. Now, what is it we actually want is the question. I think it's just the Chaplain. I might be wrong there because truthfully, like... It could just be helpful to get like a concealing curtain or something just to be able to pull from the hand here, but I think this is okay. Uh, and we'll see. So they're gonna get a card out of our graveyard, that's fine. Uh, unfortunately, it is gonna drain for a little bit of life, but that's fine. All right, it's another tenacious underdog, sure. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we just play out the chaplain. The question is, do we attack? I think we do, um, because if they decide to double block, we definitely just kill the Trespasser. Um, and it looks like they're planning to, so that's perfectly fine. I don't want them to have that Trespasser on the field. At this point, we're on, like, the ping plan. <laughs> okay, don't love that, but that's fine. We don't really have a, a great option there, so we're just gonna have to take it. Uh, we could, okay, so they're not going to attack there. That's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Blight Pile. Uh, I will attack in here. 
We do have Blight Pile next turn to drain for three, plus three damage from the birds. They're gonna be able to gain some life from the Trespasser, but it looks like they're gonna shock themselves to play that underdog, so that's kind of nice. Um, they have so many underdogs, it's insane. Okay, so they're just using this to draw a card. Kind of interesting that they're not, like, attacking. <laughs> uh, I kind of thought they would be, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and activate this. We're going to deal three uh, and attack for three. And I'm going to sandbag this land. Unfortunately, we can't really do anything about this. We're just going to have to go for it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the question becomes, can they kill us? If they have another graveyard trespasser, technically they could. Uh, which would be scary. So I think in that capacity, we're a little bit stuck at having to block. Uh, Graveyard Trespasser in hand would be the only way they would win uh, that I can think of. Maybe, yep, there we go. We got it. I can't believe that. We took down Mono Black <laughs> with Defenders. That was really good, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. This month's Patreon rewards feature some of the most impactful Lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy keep, I think, again. Um, we've got the concealing curtains, which I do like quite a lot. I'm assuming, oh, interesting. Okay, Waterfront District, very cool start. All right, let's see what the opponent's up to. I'm assuming some kind of Esper control uh, just would be my guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we just play this out. We do have a handful of defenders in hand here, so we're actually at a point where we just kind of want to play as many as we can. Touch the Spirit Realm could be quite good depending on what style of Esper this ends up being. I'm assuming it's a tempo control, but they could have just Rafines or something along those lines, which is obviously annoying. Sure, that's fine. Um, okay, let's do this, and I'm wondering if we just do this. I think not, though, because we've got the Chaplain. I think we actually do just kind of want max volume on uh, Defenders at the moment. I'm sure they've got ways to answer all of these. Um, but the one nice thing about playing the Defenders deck, and we, we kind of touched on this last game, the fact that you get out of range of Meat Hook just kind of inherently with that, that big butt <laughs> uh, is kind of nice. Um, I do really like that. Okay, uh, so now is definitely Touch the Spirit Realm world. We have to get Rafine off the battlefield, I think. I don't really think we have a better option there. Yes, uh, and we will happily pay the one. Rafine in general is just a card that we don't deal with very well. Like, we can block pretty well with the chaplains, just in terms of we have a crap load of creatures, but uh, I don't really love that. So, we're gonna do this. I think it's just chaplain time. Unfortunately, we do have to take a damage here, which is not ideal. But that gives us three of these little guys. Next turn, we've actually got another chaplain if we'd like it. But we do need to start offsetting this damage as quickly as possible because really, I mean, we're not in great shape against a Shieldred. Uh, I'm glad we took out the Rafine, but now part of me wishes we had just kind of held off and blocked. Uh, so throwing out the Chaplain had some blockers here for the Rafine and instead gotten rid of this, but it is what it is. All right. Well, that's absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, all right. That might have just sealed the deal. Truthfully, I don't know that there's much we could do at this point, but, uh, and again, all of these caves are just absolutely terrible for us. I'm gonna play the Spirited Companion first here because if we draw a white source, we can get away with uh, playing that. But yeah, unfortunately, this is just not looking good for us. All right. So we do have a way to tap this down at some point now, but we also have to spend mana to like progress our game plan. Otherwise we just die. So I think we're just dead. We may see what we draw this upcoming turn and then call it after that. Um, I mean, technically I think we block. I don't love it, but I don't think we've got a better option. We just have to give ourselves maximum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we can draw two cards, but that puts us down to four. We can Chaplain for two. 
<laughs> we got to deal 31 uh, points of damage before we take seven. I think I'm going to good game him here. Uh, that's unfortunate, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and move into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's see if we can do a little better this time. This is a great start. Uh, we, we have a one into two into three, so I'm actually quite happy with that. Uh, and it looks like potentially mono white. Uh, so hopefully these defenders actually keep us in range of not losing in the first few turns. Uh, if that's the case, we should be okay uh, because we can just kind of block and not really have to worry about as much. So uh, let's actually just go ahead and Spirited Companion. I don't particularly want to pull the trigger on the Infernal Grasp yet. I don't really think we have to. Um, they are going to be able to attack in here given that, you know, obviously this is going to just kind of bounce off of one, but we can't really effectively block the other. Uh, look at target opponent's hand, choose any card now. All right, so that's probably going to just name Infernal Grasp or Touch. Uh, it could be either one. Uh, Infernal Grasp, sure. Uh, what's nice is because we have the Touch the Spirit Realm, we actually uh, still can deal with this, so I think that's okay. Um, cool. So we do take one, not the end of the world. Uh, let's go ahead, Shattered Sanctum. Let's go ahead and drop this down. We're definitely just gonna take that off the field. Um, and I will attack in. I'm not planning to block with the Spirited Companion anytime soon. Um, I don't think we're at that point. Uh, there's the Adeline, definitely expected that. Um, all right, let's do this. But now we actually can just kill the Adeline <laughs> uh, and use Spirited Companion here. So let's do this. Let's get that off the field for sure. Let's do this. It's going to draw us a card. Technically, I guess we should have done that first. Um, and again, I am going to just ping for one here. Uh, cool. We're basically just trying to keep the training counters off of this as best we can. That's scary as crap, but we do have Soul Transfer. So uh, I'm going to take the block here. Again, just saving as much damage as we can. Uh, let's soul transfer. Yep. Uh, exile target creature. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we can do that too. So that's nice. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. It's an exile as well, which is awesome. Um, let's throw you down and let's blight pile. Excellent. So... Now, we do have a way of like pinging down and dealing a little extra damage, so we'll see. Man, they ripped another Sarah Paragon. <laughs> they might have already had it, but still, that's that's annoying. Uh, interesting draw there. So we can do the Spirited Companion play uh, just basically for free, uh, which is nice. Not for free, but you know what I mean. Uh, once you're ready to play a land card, okay. All right, so what's the best play here? Uh, I think it's just a wait. Um, yep. I guess we could have forced the issue. Well, not really. They would have just blocked with a, <laughs> a hopeful initiate. Oh, no. Um, that changes the math. Significantly changes the math. That's a big problem. All right, so they... Yep, they played it smart. I was going to say they could have tried to do the Adeline play, but they didn't. That was really good by the opponent. Wow, they're attacking with everything. Um, let's kill one of these. Definitely. Um, hmm. I think we just do this. We're basically just in the realm of we have to kill everything, especially these, because they can kill the Touch the Spirit Realm and get that anointed Peacekeeper back. Unfortunately, they just get to replay some of these things, uh, which is a huge problem. Uh, okay, let's do this. Mm, not sure we can get out of this one, I'll be honest. Um, so what could we play this turn? Probably nothing impactful, right? Uh, yeah. So I think we just take this, we'll throw you down. And just because, we'll throw this down. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, not feeling overly optimistic about this game either, but hey, we did get that one win in, so I'm perfectly happy. 
Honestly, I think that in itself is an accomplishment. Because uh, as fun as this deck is, I don't necessarily think it's like the strongest deck in the world. <laughs> All right, so we get to block here for basically free. Uh, let's double block here. So this actually works out relatively okay because this is gonna die thanks to this dying. Yeah, we get to keep all of these guys, uh, which is very good. And now we can just drop this down. We're gonna get five of these, so I mean, I'm not saying we're going to win, but <laughs> I am saying we at least have an out. Um, so we do get to flip this too. We're definitely going to pitch that. Um, do we attack here? Uh, no, I don't think we do. I don't know. This has been a time. They unfortunately just get to replay these, so it really doesn't matter. Thanks to that, that Sarah Paragon, man. What a card. What an amazing, amazing card. Uh, they pump up twice, and now this isn't killable via our tokens anymore. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, very solid. Really? Okay. It's interesting. Um, right. <laughs> uh, so, again, unfortunately, they just get to, like, straight do whatever they want. Um... I mean, we're dead, right? Like 100% dead. Yeah, I'm just gonna good game them. We don't have it there, guys. That's unfortunate. It is what it is. Let's jump into the wrap up. All right, guys. So uh, first and foremost, again, I just want to say Legend VD, thank you so much, my man. This deck really caught my eye immediately. Uh, I've been drafting a little bit of the set just in spare time, like in between all of this work crap that's going on. Uh, I've been drafting a little bit just to get a better handle on the set. I usually don't do that, uh, but it does seem like Defenders is an archetype that's worth exploring. And again, I think Legend VD, you did a great job of uh, putting a list together here that I think is pretty fun. Do I think it's necessarily tier one? Obviously not, but uh, it is a really fun deck and we did get a win. It's surprisingly pretty good against a lot of things right now. I just think there's a lot of like really good top end stuff that obviously is going to get around it like that Sarah Paragon that we saw in that game. I think if you don't have that Sarah Paragon, all of a sudden this deck becomes a lot more viable because you're not having to worry about the replayability aspect. Unfortunately, they have that uh, and so that's always going to be a problem. Uh, at least in today's standards. So it is what it is, but it was still a really fun list and I really enjoyed it. So again, Legend VD, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you guys for being patient with me as I have been gone for a large period of time this month. Everything will be back to normal in October. Uh, but John, thank you so much as well. I know I've said this in the last video as well for, for taking care of things while I've been gone. I really do appreciate it. Guys, show John some love, show everybody else some love. Legend VD, thank you. Uh, and guys, I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys hopefully again very soon for some more gameplay videos, but for now, I'm out of here.